Here's another project I'm starting. We need a break from carving. It's, a, it's going to be a powder flask for the case. It's a inch and a half copper pipe. It's actually what I made some, one of my whistles for the boat out of. And I'm going to squish it down oblong it. I'm going to go take it out and heat it up red hot and quench it in water to anneal it so I can squish it a little bit more. And then this is going to go, I'll probably make a, a domed, a, a wood plug domed on this end. This will set in it, flat on the bottom. And this is a, a powder measure. That opens it up and lets the powder go in. This is a 40 grain, I've got a 60 grain. Put your finger over it, hold it down, let the powder in, let it off, tip it up. There's your 40 grains of powder down the barrel. So that's going to be polished copper. And then I've got this. This is a priming flask. You can screw this here. You put 4FG powder in. When you push this in the pan, you push it down. It fills that nozzle with powder. And when you let it up, it drops 3 grains of 4FG in the pan for priming. Got a little hole here for a lanyard. So those will be part of my case. The case set. So now I've made this little wood piece out of the same walnut as the stock is. Got it hollowed out on the inside. And okay, it'll go in half inch in here. And then my spout here will be epoxied. This will be epoxied in there and this will be epoxied into there. And there, that's my... Then I'll make another plug to go here that will set flush. And it should sit. It'll sit upright and it'll go in. It'll go in the case. There'll be dividers, you know, padded. Another little thing that I made, it's gonna be the screwdriver for my case set. Made the blade from a sliver of that uh, lawnmower blade. And I worked it down the Dremel tool and filed it so that it fits the screw really nice. It goes into here. Uh, about an inch and a half. And I got it set in with JB Weld. And I got me a cool little brass ferrule to put on it. My powder flask turned out pretty good. And this is the cleaning rod. It's uh, The end is thread at 832 for the cleaning accessories. So. This is the leftover piece of walnut from the stalks. There wasn't enough clear areas in here to get another stalk or so out of, so I'm cutting it up into planks. I'm going to make the box. Well, here's the piece. It's out of the planks. They're less than an inch thick now. I'll be cutting them down to half inch. There's my new table saw rig. That is one sweet saw. It runs very smooth. It's got a, what I liked about it is this fence. The fence fastens both ends. It's very precision. It's got a, a, a little knob there. You can really dial it in. It's got a really nice angle gauge. And uh, this measurement thing is really precise. I can get really precise cuts with it. And I've cut the wood for my pistol case. These are my walnut planks I sawed up for the case. This will be a front or a back. <laughs> That'll be a front or a back depending on which is the prettiest. And these are the ends. I want to do dovetail corners. I'm going to try to teach myself how to do dovetail corners. And then these pieces are actually the nicest pieces. I can almost book match for the top. Just couldn't resist this. <laughs> the beginning of a case set. I got some more wood to build a case. For the pistols. I got some. Uh, it's bass wood, quarter inch thick. I'm gonna make all the dividers with. And I got some bass wood, eighth of an inch thick, which I'm gonna line the inside. It's gonna set up above the edge of the sides a little bit 
Then I got some poplar, half inch thick, that I'm going to make the bottom with. I got that piece of poplar cut in half, two two foot sections of a half inch by six inch. I glued them together. It's like doing an instrument. I clamped them up on this side, pulled, pulled it towards each other, and then clamped the other side. Well, I had my wood all milled down to a half inch thick, and uh, oh, it's really nice. I'm on the filler with a, it looks the sawmill it has a wood shop. He planed these down for me, so now I'm going to glue up uh, the top. I'm going to book match as best as I can, as I got the book matched edges clamped together, and I'm working them down. On the old hillbilly belt sander, I work them down together there, get them even, and then uh, they should glue up pretty nice. This is the plan for my gun case. I had the pistol setting on here, so I saw refine this once I get them uh, get them together into their final shape. This is the, the box in the middle, little hole of powder horn, and then this is these are the dividers. It'll go around the gun and the, the cleaning rod will go up here and over here the uh, priming horn, I think now here the screwdriver, here the priming horn. I don't know what I'll put here. If I can get them like a brass bullet mold, I'll put that in here and then these corners, I'll put these this will be positioned after the guns are finished and set in place here. So that's how I'm anyway, how I'm getting the, the dimensions for the case. This is just a quarter inch by inch and a half basswood. I glued the top pieces together same way as I did the back. I just put the, the clamps on one side of the the clamping blocks and then pulled them together and tightened up the other sides. Wood is, has figure in it. It's amazing. Oh no, I've got the guns down to pretty close to their final dimensions. I can fit them to my cased pieces and get the final dimensions for my case. So the inside dimensions for the walnut part is going to be 22 and a quarter inches long by 9 inches wide. Well, this is something I've never done yet, but I've always wanted to do dovetail corners on this box. So, uh, this is the... I'm going to put do the tails on the front and the back and the pins on the sides. So, I'm going to start out with the back, so maybe by the time I get to the front I'll be a little better at it. I'm using a 10 degree angle. To get these with the tails. And this will be the half pin. What I did, I just, I'm doing two tails. I just came in 3 8 of an inch here, 3 8 inch here, did a 10 degree angle. And the center I did 3 8 here and then 10 degree angle here so I got about a half inch in here so this this has to come off this has to come off because those would be the pins on the side pieces got my right angle there because these have to be straight these have to be 90 degrees if they're not it either won't go on or there'll be gaps so now I got to cut these tails out, and uh, I want to do them by hand, the hand cut dovetails. Eventually, I'll probably make a jig for the table saw because you can cut really accurate dovetails with that. But uh, that's not really hand cut dovetails. So this box could be hand cut dovetails for better or for worse. <laughs>
Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Uh, I left these. This isn't sear. I added a sixteenth to it, so these will stick out a sixteenth of an inch. So I can trim them down level with the wood. The same thing with the pins; they'll stick out through here a sixteenth. So I can just file them down. File them down level. So tails. Well, the tails are cut on the front and the back. Yeah, towards the end, it's, they started getting easier. So now is the time I got to true them up. They have to be, uh, this surface has to be at right angles because they have to slide on the pins. So any changes I can do, I can do now. And I noticed some people just cut these angles freehand. I just wanted to get them kind of even, so I got them all on 10 degrees, as close as I can. If you go off a little bit, it doesn't matter because you're going to use these to mark the ends of the sides to cut for the pins. That this these will go down over. So that's what's what I have to do next. I have to make a mark here on the inside dimension. And uh, on these two, I allowed a sixteenth inch extra, and then uh, then I'll, they'll mark, get marked for each corner that goes on. Because once they're made it up, you can't change them. So I'll make uh, corner one and corner two and corner three and corner four A, B, C, and D, or one mark, two marks, three mark, whatever. To uh, I'll probably just use marks. So that I know uh, which co which corner they go. I I might just put a little like in them like an A, A and A and B and B. And I think I'll probably do that. And uh, with arrows, I've got this I got this marked F for front with an arrow up, and that one marked B for back with the arrow. Up, so it'll be going like this, and this will be going like this, and then I have to decide which which up. I know with the outs, I want this side out, the size I sand it all smooth, and I think I think I'll go like that. Yeah, I got my pieces marked. Here's what I saw. I got gaps at the end, so I, I got to take a little more out of the bottom of this center here. I guess this way works about as good as any. You're just a little bit high there in the middle. Just an even little bead of light coming through in all those spots. So now, very sharp pencil. Mark these. And those are markings where my pins will be. This part comes out. This part comes out. I'll stay on this side of these lines, on the waist side of these lines. Just leave that line there, and I gotta mark straight lines down here, right angles. The square, it has to be perfectly straight, because these are gonna have to slide in to these. So I'm gonna cut them a little, a little on the large side and, and file them to fit. Maybe eventually I'll get good enough to where I can just saw them out and they'll go on like uh, the guys I've been watching on YouTube, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> then this is my first one. This is this is A. <laughs> but this is in the back. So hopefully, like it was cutting the tail, by the time I get around the front, I'll be a little bit better. Well, so now I'm going to try cutting my first set of 
pins. So I've got this area marked where the tails will go, that's the waist, and I've used my square, drawn vertical lines here. So what I'm going to do is stay, stay on the waist side of the line. I'm going to leave the line. I can file it out and fit. But if I go on this side of the line, I'm going to have a gap. So start off there like that, and I'm going to get my vertical thing going here. And go down to that line there. On both sides. Okay, no, there's one cut. Try to get this waist out without cutting into my sides, because that's where my joint will be. That's the way you get these out of there. line because that determines the interior dimensions of the box. First ever trial of my first dovetail joint. <clears throat> it doesn't. <laughs> well that's okay. It means I've, I've got some filing to do. At least I won't have uh, gaps where I don't want them. So, so I see I could have filed a little bit closer to the lines. I'm gonna file a little lead in there. Yeah, it helps it start in plus keeps it from squeezing all the glue out in that area. A little square corner in there too. And my little light here is showing me where the high spots are. Well, there it is. For better, for worse, it's pretty worse. <laughs> Deepening these grooves. Too much filing. I gotta do uh, more sawing and less filing. Because deepening these grooves to get the depth, I went off on some of these angles opened up some pretty good gaps there and then I had too much gap here so I lowered these which opened up the gaps even more it'll work though I'll pack it with uh, glue and sawdust anyway that's my first one but it'll certainly work now I know what I gotta do to make it better not so much filing. This is corner B. And I attempt to perfect my dovetailing method. Too much filing is too much chance to, to get errors. So I'm going to try to be a more accurate SAR. Well, that went pretty well. 
So I'm going to try a different method also of uh, removing the waste so I don't have to do so much filing down in here because that's when I get the, I lose my sharp corners and uh, it's just not really that straight so I'm going to do a scribe a line right across here with my knife. Instead of filing them, I'm using the chisel. I got pretty sharp, and I got my line lined up right with the top edge of this top jaw. I'm using that to guide the chisel, and it looks like it's doing pretty good. If I can keep those corners sharp. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Nice flat, square corner right on the line. You know, you look, you look at everybody's methods. It's, everybody's got some way of doing it. And, but then you end up working your own way out at, at what works best. This is, seems to be what works best for me. Very light shavings with a sharp sizzle. That's going to settle down in there. This one's going to fit much better. So, and that's what I'm hoping. Each, each one is going to fit a little better. By the time I get around the front, of those pretty nice ones. So, a whole history of my learning dovetails will be in this box. Mm, yeah. I'm liking that. This little tiny shaver. Because when you reach that one point where you get the right clearance, and when she just drops on, and if you take too much off, then you have gaps. And that's trying to get as few gaps as possible. Okay, there's that point I was looking for. I did pick up a dovetail saw. This other saw I've been using this. This is an old fret saw. I fretted a lot of uh, dulcimers and guitars. Well, actually, this is the second one I wore out. I've got a new one on there now. I got two of these old ones, so it was a wore out saw. And it's hard to follow the line with a wore out saw. This one is a dovetail saw. It's a fine tooth and it'll cut either direction. Narrow kerf. And this will be used for nothing but cutting dovetails. A little bit longer, a little bit wider. It's easier to see when you're at right angles and I think it'll be easier to follow an angle. So dovetail saw for cutting dovetail only. Well, here's my basic box. Put together there's side A. Not real good. Side B is better. Actually C and D are pretty good. I'll be clamping these in to I'll close up some of the gaps, but they're interlocking. They lock themselves together, and uh, it's a good joint because you don't need any fastenings. And I think that's one of the reasons why they were developed. They've been used for a very long time, and so now I need to put the bottom in. And what I'm going to do is a rabbit joint. There, it's called. I'm going to have a a groove in along the 
bottom edge, just quarter inch in, and I'm going to have a tongue on the bottom that will fit into that, so everything will walk together you know, without any fastings. And I believe that, I, I like reverse archaeology, I, I build these things figuring if I was living back then, and using the knowledge and methods that they had back then, you know, how would I build something? And they didn't have a lot of fastenings. The nails and screws were hard to come by. And uh, so if you could use, if you could build something without using fastenings, you were a whole lot better off. So that's, this is going to be built without fastenings on the sides and the bottom. I'll probably have to use some fastenings on the top. But. I think that's going to work pretty good. And uh, the, the guns at this point are, I've got them roughly put together. This is the silver rifle. I, I still have the final uh, shaping to do on the stocks. But, uh, yeah, I, I could set them in there. And I've got my dividers. Just see what it'll look like. Here's the brass smoothbore. I really like these. I'm really happy with the way they're turning out. So anyway, so this is kind of roughly going to be it. Uh, there'll be a, an eighth of an inch of uh, wood inside here, stick up above this lip a little bit. But. Uh, yeah, it's going to be my case. Now i got to make the bottom. Going back from my session with the table saw, now I have this. Got my rabbit in my bottom. The rabbit's on the top of, on the bottom of the bottom. This here will go into the slot in the other pieces. And I just, just to make things not so difficult. A uh, quarter inch wide here, and a quarter inch deep cut here, and a quarter inch deep cut here. That would be plenty nice for a 10. And then in these, I set a mark where I wanted the saw cut to end, and then put a mark on the outside. Well, I'm going up against the fence where I want the saw blade. I had to mark on the saw, on the fence where the saw blade ended, where the saw cut ended. So I got a mark there, and and what I did was, and they don't recommend it. All the the uh, saw safety books are going to say don't don't you dare ever do it, but uh, everyone does. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Okay, so I wanted a quarter inch slot right here. So I did the same thing. I marked up here where I wanted the cut to end. Made the mark on the saw. And then you put it up against the fence on your mark and drop it down and then just run it along there until your other mark hits the mark on the fence at the front and back ends of the blade and then you get the saw. So now what I have to do is chisel out this. Okay, this is also, keep things simple, I got uh, a quarter inch slot and a quarter inch, a 3 16th foot chisel to the jaw. I could cut this with uh, knives and chisels, and that's what they did in the old days. But uh, I just really like my table saw. <laughs> it does a really nice job. If I had more time to devote to it, maybe I would. But if I didn't have a table saw, I sure as heck would. I've got the corners cut off where the slot starts, and I've got it marked. It looks like it gets flat again an inch and three quarter out here. So that's going to go on there. I'm going to get it, this curve, I'm just going to file it back to my old files. This thing is very 
Well, there's my basic box. It's uh, not put together with glue at this point, but it's yeah, it's pretty solid. There's no glue. together without glue for, for a test fit plan my strategy for gluing and yeah, there it is I'm going to put it together with glue but I'm not going to film it because I'm going to make a serious mess so I'm going to put newspaper out on the floor and go for it glue it up, clap it up you know, I'll make some little slivers to go in over on that A corner. The glue's dry now. There's the dovetails with all the... There's the A. That's the worst one. That's the one where I had to add the wedges. Yeah, two wedges added in there. And it's packed with sawdust. And over here, these are, there's the D, that was the last one that I did. That was the closest. And this is the other one on the front. So I sand all these down. And let's see how they look. They're still sticking up, now I got them extended. So I can sand them all down flush without taking too much off the faces here. And inside they're pretty tight. I went around and packed sawdust and any gaps that I had. This is all going to be velveted. So yeah, the box is, is getting there. <laughs> it has become a box. <laughs> Well, I'm putting the uh, upper lip on the box. I was going to use this uh, basswood, but I had these strips of walnut left over from ripping the sides, so I used the layer of basswood underneath them. And uh, now I've got these really nice. It stands about 3 sixteenths above. The box and the lid will go over this. And I've got it lined with the basswood. And that's what the uh, felt will glue onto. And I'm putting my dividers in. Got that one clapped in place. And I set them in here and centered them up with the pistols in here and then uh, marked around them. And drill through from the inside where I wanted the screws to hit. And then I clamp them in and run the drill countersink in from the outside. And I drilled and countersunk for the uh, one inch number six flathead screws and I'll make some wood plugs to go in the holes in the bottom. So I'd, I don't want to have any fastenings coming through the sides, so I don't. I won't have any fastenings coming through the sides. Everything be fastened from the bottom, and I might put some uh, some of the little brass brads going in into the dividers into the side wall, just a short distance in. So that get them all drilled and pre-drilled, and then I'll put some glue on them and put them in with the screws and let my dividers in. I got my dividers in, partitions, all partitioned off. Uh, these uh, areas here, I drove a, a one inch brass brad in. And uh, there are all the screws. I had one here that came out the side in here. So I just moved, I lined it up with here and just headed that side a little bit and 
Put some glue and a toothpick in that hole. They'll all be plugged with wood plugs. So yeah, that's it's pretty cool. I just kind of put the pistols in here and centered them up, centered this up, so I got space all the way around. So I'm gonna have some padding and uh, the felt, and I'm gonna have a corner going across here. I got the gun drawn in there. So I gotta get some more of this stuff. So there'll be a little compartment, corner compartment on each side. But yeah, so I'm pretty happy that uh, turned out pretty good. <laughs> it's a gun case. All the dividers are in now. Got the corner pieces in. I have some pieces set in here so the lid can set down on. And I fasten them with the that screw going in here, and then one on the bottom in the middle. Now I'm making the covers for the corner boxes. I had this, I wanted a quarter inch thick. I got this piece of it's a little over half inch walnut. I got it marked on the center, so I'm going to attempt to just saw this into two equal pieces. It's going to take some time. And that wasn't too bad. I was working down on the old hillbilly belt sander. Well, these are the modifications I made. It goes this way, actually, to uh, the case. I've got it hollowed out here for the belt hook. And I have a little cradle here for the forestock. And over here, because this gun is a little bit thinner than the other gun, because it's got a smaller barrel, being a 50 caliber round barrel, I made this spacer, 8th inch boxwood, but I didn't have to cut so deep for the belt hook here. And I've got the little cradle out of balsa wood. I'm using balsa wood for this. Well, I found out on the French formed cases, appears the French didn't overthink things like we do. <laughs> oh, and I made these little tops here. Same walnut as the case and the guns. Yeah, the French made form-fitting frames out of thin uh, lath wood, real flexible thin wood, and uh, filled it with excelsior, or whatever they had. One guy said he found newspaper in one. I, I uh, emailed, emailed some museums and found out. So yeah, you just make a framework to fit the gun. You stuff it with whatever you got and cover it with uh, velvet or uh, felt. And you're good to go. <laughs> Everybody's debating over what did they really use. I thought cork. I suggested cork and the guy at the museum said it would probably work really well. But uh, what's readily available is balsa wood. And it's easier to work than cork, and it'll be all covered with uh, green felt. So, yeah, the the box itself is uh, it's ready to start felt covering. I just got to do the top. I wanted to get the gun to the same height. It's going to have the top. I'm going to be slightly padded, and I wanted to come down and just hold against the locks to keep the guns from rattling around. And then I made a thing there for the rim for the cleaning rod to go in, so it won't rattle around either. It's just a piece of balsa wood with a the corners knocked off. So uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting good to go on this. And I've got the screw holes plugged. A plug cutter for three eighths plugs. So got some plugs from the uh, leftover poplar and plugged all the screw holes. Some of them turned out a little ugly, but I'm gonna stain this uh, dark to match the walnut.